Today I will be testing the Bava Green Professional LED 240 watt. It is sold in the US under the Grow Quantum LED brand. Here's the box it came in. You can see here it's using the Samsung LM301Bs. Uh, it's 400K and 2700K with UVA, red, and far red LEDs. Uh, this is the 240 watt version and it is dimmable. All right, on to the contents of the box. They do include hanging hardware. I had a little bit of trouble with this. I'll talk about that more in the later parts of the video, but it is two ratchet straps, which is pretty nice. A lot of lights only include one and then two S hooks as well. Onto the light itself. You can see it's two quantum boards. Each one is 120 watts. Um, it's quite heavy actually. It clocks in at around eight and a half pounds. So here's a, a closer up look at the quantum boards. Uh, there's no lenses or reflectors on those LEDs. So you're going to need to use this in a grow tent. You can see the two different um, color temperatures of LEDs there. The power supply is on the back. And you can see here's the controls with individual switches for power, UV, red, and far red, and the dimming knob. So I really wanted to take this power supply cover off to get a look at the actual power supply. Um, pretty simple to take off. And then underneath you can see that they are using a real Meanwell driver, the HLG 240H. This is a pretty nice driver for these two quantum boards. Okay, onto the hanging hardware. I could not figure out how to do this, so I reached out to Grow Quantum LED, and they instructed me that I was supposed to attach each half of the ratcheting strap, uh, one to each side, and then use the S hooks through the middle of the strap. I did not do that. I ended up using some other hardware I had to hang it, um, like this, like you can see here, and then I have the ratcheting straps going from each of those carabiners. This worked out nicely for me. Um, you can see here how I have it hanging in the door frame just for testing purposes. All right, onto the onboard controls. So first, there's this dimmer here, which is pretty nice. It gives a big wide range of brightness levels. Then there's the overall power switch. And see how on is up and off is down? The other LEDs are switched for some reason, where on is down, but the switches are indicating incorrectly. So that's a little confusing. Um, but here I'm going to have a shot showing the UV turning on, then the red LEDs turning on, and then the far red LEDs turning on. You're going to want to use the red and far red switches uh, throughout the flowering phase of your plant growth. And if you have some really dank tomatoes with trichomes, right when you start seeing the trichomes is when you want to start using the UV LEDs, as that'll really increase the trichome uh, production. This does include the power supply on board, like I said, and the included power cable is actually quite long, which is nice, so you probably won't need an extension cable. 
onto the testing of the actual LED performance. So I'm um, looking at the actual power draw from the wall. I am getting 259 watts, which is quite nice. Uh, taking a measurement of the back of the power supply casing, uh, 96, 97 degrees Fahrenheit. Taking a measurement of the heatsink itself, I'm getting around 122 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, the board itself is also uh, around 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty hot, so be careful there. On to the PAR readings. I am taking in a 2 foot by 4 foot area um, 32 readings and the hanging height of the LED is 18 inches which is recommended for flower by the manufacturer. Here are the readings I actually got. It does have somewhat of a hot spot which is to be expected for LEDs without lenses. So on the right you can see um, what I think are good recommended ranges for flowering and fruiting around 500 to 800 and vegetative growth which should be around 200 to 500. That puts this light squarely in the powerful flowering uh, arena even for a two foot by four foot area. So on the left you can see my hanging height at 18 inches. Uh, my coverage area at two foot by four foot it gives me an average PPFD of, of 701 which means if we did spread this out properly with a lens we could maybe get 700 everywhere. Uh, that gives me a total PPF of 521 and a power draw of 259 watts. It gives me an efficiency measured in PPF per watts of 2.01, which is excellent. Anything over 2 is really where you want to be. Okay, that wraps up my review. This light was just released two days ago and the pricing has not been released yet. Um, when that is released, I will post a link to it in the description. At the end of the day, I can strongly recommend this light for growing and flowering in a two foot by four foot area. It seems more than enough for that. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.